Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for the introduction and thank you very much for the invitation, especially to Petra Frank, or Petra Frank. And uh, I, th I think um, I actually want also to thank Kay. She made a brilliant job in advance as, an, as the organizer of the conference. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to have these contacts. And so I'm very happy and, uh, to be here and to present you the what I call uh, the choreographic toolkit. Probably the name choreographic toolbox is the better one, but so many people use the term toolbox that I say toolkit. <laughs> so um, I'm not I'm not talking about actually dance, and probably um, you are um, you want to know something about dance didactic. I will talk about didactics of choreography, and why do I talk about choreography? As you, as you heard, I'm a sociologist and also a dance scholar, and that's why for me in the long history of my work, um, 25 years old now, um, I always try to combine my experiences in dance and um, also my, my, um, my, my experiences in practice with my sociological interest and I found one day that the idea of choreography is very important to understand social figurations. And now I'm talking from a socio uh, sociological perspective. Why is it so interesting to understand social figurations? It is interesting because choreo choreography tells us how uh, social figurations work, how they practice, how the, what we call in German language, Bewegungsordnung, how the movement order of social figuration works. And there are not so many sociologists who talk about, actually, I, I don't, I don't know so many, uh, so for example, um, Irving Goffman, probably the name is known here, Irving Goffman, the American sociologist, he talked about um, the interactions, for example, in the traffic. And when you see the traffic, you have a kind of choreography. And, but he, he, um, he mentioned that as an example, that social figurations are almost uh, embodied in the, um, embodied in, in the people and they, that they are organized in a, um, in a kind of bodily experience. Um, and what I did in the last years coming from sociology, I worked a lot about the uh, choreographic order of the urban space, for example, the urban infrastructure, architecture, but also um, in ballet rooms, in, in dance floors, and uh, now I have a project about protest movements. Um, why do to understand the new protest movements, which are very important for the um, development of democratic society, especially in North Africa um, and also in, in some East European countries. How do they organize the protest as a choreography? As you know, the, the demonstrations, for example, in, in uh, from the 19th century on, from the workers' movement, were organized demonstrations where people move in lines and so on, and they uh, they were legalized. But now they have we have things like flash mobs and things like that. And this these are kind of um, William Forsythe would probably say um, real-time compositions. That means that there is a score, and the people organize themselves by a score by media. They come together, and then they perform their protest. The protest is that they have no demands, probably against the banks and uh, things like that, uh, um, against the financial crisis. So very big, <laughs> huge topics, but they perform their protest. And this is the sociological idea of choreography, which is very important. And for me, it's also important to bring this idea into an education context, that, that choreography is not so much related to dance, of course it is related, because in, in the history of dance, choreography is the term of dance history. It comes, as you know, probably from choros, and that what, which means place, and also um, the, the form of, of uh, dancing, as a round dance, for example, and also graphine means writing, the inscription. Uh, the inscription of a movement or of a choreographic order. And here, in my examples which I gave you, we have the inscription as a materialized structure, for example, in the urban space. 
There is a choreographic order in the, in the uh, urban space, for example, in the urban space, but also in every institution. Like in universities, we have a materialized structure, like here, there is a center, I'm here in the center, um, you are sitting there and you are looking at me and, and so on. It's, a, it's an organized structure and everybody of you knows how to sit. This is one idea of choreography. The other idea is, of course, what are you doing when you are sitting? As some of them, you are sitting on the floor, the others like this, so you, are different, you have different kinds of sitting. That means you organize yourself as a social figuration by your, uh, and using your bodily practices, your personal bodily practices, but these practices from a sociological point of view are not your individual things, you can't choose them for yourself. They are habitualized, that means you are educated in a specific, um, a specific bodily practice, for example, concerning gender, the idea of gender, how, how women sit and how men sit, concerning the idea of class, bourgeois people usually sit in another way and so on. So that means we have two, two ideas of choreography, the, the represented materialized order of choreography and the things you are doing with it. And these both ideas are for me very important to make them, them understandable in, let's say, in the broad sense of dance education. So that means that when I'm talking about choreography, um, uh, or when I'm talking about didactics, I'm talking about the didactic, didactics of choreography. That means for me it's important that I try to, um, to make clear that, that choreography is not something, for example, in schools, what dance teacher or sports teacher or music teacher and so on are doing with students to make understandable and we have a project with teachers, we have a kind of, um, what is it, MIS, Master for Applied Studies, a one-year program for teachers in Hamburg, so who learn to, um, how to make choreographies with children. So that not means for children, but not with children, and how to make it understandable what, what I was talking about. And this is actually uh, one of the important background for what I want to tell you now, um, the choreographic toolkit. As you probably know, there is one man, his name is Johann Amos Comenius, in, um, and he lived in, in this time, it's long ago, he's, um, as some of you know, the grandfather of didactics. And he spoke about, and, and it's interesting that it was in this time, he spoke about um, didactic as the art of teaching. It is an art form, it's not uh, related, not so much like we talk about it, that we have a field of education and we have a social field of art and a social field of education. For him, um, it's the art of teaching, it's something everybody is doing. For example, uh, probably, some of you know these, um, um, so we heard about uh, foresight, but probably some of you know these um, choreographic objects from, from uh, William Forsyth. One is, for example, the white bouncy castle. You know this bouncy castle, well, what children want. This big bouncy castle he built is 30 meters long, and, and so he, it was um, developed at the end of the 90s, and it was some years ago in Hamburg in the Kunstverein, um, and people came in, more than 30,000 people were in this white bouncy castle and they were jumping in the bouncy castle. Old, ma old men, young women, children, big people, small people um, and so on. Everybody was jumping and what, what did they understand there? It was an art of teaching choreography because they understood when they were jumping that is a kind that they create in their jumping a kind of power relation in social figuration. So they went into, for example, I made a big rehearsal about it, they went into these bright bouncy castle, some stand in the middle and they were jumping very hardly and some on the end were who, who, who they didn't want to do, they wanted to be passive but they could, couldn't be passive because there was, huh? so 
And it was a good understanding of how to deal with center and peri periphery, and you know what I mean, and also with uh, inclusion, exclusion, um, how, to, how people are related to each other. And it was interesting, and afterwards I make some round tables and some discussions with some people there, and they said, oh, first I understood now that I'm not alone, that it's not me and the world, so that that the world is here and that we create the world. And it's not about how to get in contact to the world. And it's also not about that I have to interact with somebody, that I'm alone and I interact with some, somebody, that, that it's an idea of choreography, it's an art of teaching choreography or an art of teaching or um, to make understandable social figurations. So that means the art of teaching choreography is not just related to teachers. Yeah, that's the first thing. And the second thing with Comenius was that he related, that he related the didactics to techné. And um, the, the term techné has a very, very long history um, in, in, um, in the what is it, ancient society, in the Greek society. And Platon was the one who said, um, technique. We know the term now as technique, but but it's um, it's not the same. So technique is related to knowledge and virtuosity. That that means um, the art of teaching has both. So you want to learn something. It's about knowledge, but you have to have these um, these uh, artistic strategies, and um, it's based on principle. So it's not based on tools, it's based on principle. And when we made the choreographic toolkit, we worked with uh, 60 choreographers, and one of them was Jonathan Burroughs. And Jonathan Burroughs said this nice sentence, uh, a principle accepts, I don't know what I'm doing, but I have some parameters how to begin and how to continue. And these parameters are in relation to the material that emerges, which makes its own demands. So not about tools, not about tasks, it's about principles. And that was actually the idea of Comenius who said didactics have to, has to do something with principles. So you have to have principles as a teacher, let me say, or as a choreographer when you work with people. And, um, oh, here's a mistake. <laughs> um, and what, what is an pr um, important principle for Comenius? An important principle is the image of humanity. So this is very important, and when you look at the history of dance education, you see that there are different images of humanity in history of dance. And the modern idea, of course, is the idea of the of the, what is it, ganzheitlich, whole, total human being. And, um, but there are actually different images of humanity, but you have to have this clear. That's what he said. And when you see this, when he, he lived at the time where we, we didn't have, or where in history, where we didn't have this um, modern idea of, of humanity, which comes up, for example, with uh, Rousseau, but he had the idea that that um, you, as a teacher, you have to be very um, sensible about your idea of humanity. And we can, we can say today the idea of humanity or the image of humanity has to be related to a context. Yeah? What kind, uh, what is the ideology of humanity in different social and political contexts and what do we want to develop? Do we want to cross borders? And uh, it's a very important question when you talk about um, dance theory and dance didactics in different uh, contexts. So the second background of these choreographic toolkits is um, the relationship between artistic and scientific research. As you know, and especially in Sweden, I heard from Lena, the, the term um, artistic research is very, very much um, um, discussed. And uh, what, what we try to do with the choreographic toolkit is to combine the methods or principles of artistic research and scientific research um, to bring this together and to, 
to find an, an architecture for, for these different um, materials we had. And what we also wanted to do is working with artists, not about artistic work. So what we didn't want to do is that we try to find out how do artists work and how can we transmit it into a context of education. So we wanted to, to, to work with artists and to find out what are their working principles, what are they going to do, and uh, we want also, oh, this is a um, conversation between choreographers and their working methods. So, and this was a really important point because most of us um, don't know how choreographers actually work. We talk about lecture performances, lecture demonstration, reenactment, and all these things. And we, we always sh see the process, but we actually don't know how, how uh, choreo choreographers work. And what I f f found out when we made the project, also the choreographers don't know how the others work. <laughs> and this was interesting to see, as I told you, we worked with 60 choreographers, um, the people like um, well-known, um, in, in, in the European context, for example, Xavier Leroy, Jonathan Burroughs, uh, German ones like Martin Nachbar, Jochen Roller, um, and, and people like this. And, um, and so they came together, I, I will talk about it later, so how we did it. But it was interesting to see when we, when we worked with them that they also didn't know from each other how they work. And the third thing was um, the question, the big question, if, if you don't um, make research about artistic work for the educational field, how can you do that? How can you transmit the knowledge of choreographic work into, into another public? And uh, this was, uh, for me, a very important question because I didn't want, it, I didn't want to make a book about it. I wanted to make something practical. I wanted, wanted to do something where people, um, dancers, choreographers, teachers, um, and so can work with. And the, and the, um, ah, this is the, this is uh, the, the important sentence for me concerning choreography and dance from William Forsyth. But I already spoke about it. And what I, what I did is that we made not a book, that we make this choreographic toolbox. And <laughs> when, when we did it, when we did it, um, I, I thought, so it was a big discussion in Germany. Uh, probably you know there was a dance plan in Germany and we got 12 million euros for the development of contemporary dance. And um, everybody was talking about how we di digitalize uh, dance. And I thought, oh, I want to make it practical. I don't want to make a DVD. And I, want to dis I don't want to discuss with a lot of technical people about how to do that. I want to make it practical so that everybody can use it without technological knowledge. <laughs> and that's what I did. And the, 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 nice, the nice thing was actually that when we made the presentation in Hamburg, a lot of people bought it and they went into it to Hamburg and they went like this <laughs> through the city. So and it, now it looks like this. You can open it, it looks like this. So that you... Uh -huh. So... Uh, this, this is completely orientated on contemporary practices. So what we did is, our method was that we invited um, six or seven uh, choreographers that we made a topic like generating movements. And we invited these people for two or three days and we made a, we worked with an open space method. That means the people came together. We have a studio in at Hamburg University. The people came together and they developed their own questions. And then then we uh, tried to structure it. And the, then we worked on it for three days or two or three days in a practical and also in a theoretical way. And we made these open space methods with different topics. Um, and they, you can see it afterwards. Um, 
that um, how how we we made the architecture, but. Um, what it, it's not about the choreographic tool. But we, we don't. We didn't want to work about a specific style or sp specific aesthetic practice or a specific technique. It's not about that. It's about how to do choreography in a very um, basic, actually basic sense. It can be very, what is it, virtuos, um, and but it doesn't have to be. And that means it's open to aesthetic positions. It's not about concept choreography or concept dance, what we call concept dance. It's about different aesthetic position and different movement and dance techniques. Uh, and these uh, dance techniques are not so important uh, for these um, for this choreographic toolkit. And it's what I said, practice orientated. So there are different modules. Um, we tried to find out, oh, I have to say, before we did that, I evaluated different projects which we made in schools and also in other institutions uh, which are um, working with contemporary choreography in Hamburg. And what I found out was that there are actually two steps which are, or that are really problematic for most of the people when they work with other people and not um, so really develop things with other people. The first is they generate movements. That's, not, that's quite easy, but what to do afterwards? How to shape it? That's the first problem. And the second is what modes of composition, which modes of composition do, can I use? What can I do with these materials um, to, to bring this in, a, uh, in, in the idea of choreography? And that's why we actually, oop, so, yeah, we actually um, made different, what is it, little books, um, um, which, try to deal with different topics. And the first topic is, oh, five books, I'm too quick for, for this PowerPoint presentation. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I'll speak about this afterwards, when tool cards, this is the content actually. And this is the first um, little book, it's about um, generating movements. So. And what we did is that we tried, so we, we collected everything, what, uh, what we get, we had a video analysis and audio analysis of all the things we made with the choreographers and, um, and tried to find out how can, can people work to find movements, to, to generate movements. And then we said, okay, you, People can do it, so they have a topic, they, they have a picture or an image, they have a movie, they have literature, they have uh, um, language, they have music, they have themselves, they, they can have everything. So there are different kinds of um, starting to develop or to, to generate movements. And that's what we try to to bring into this um, little <laughs> little book, and um, and the second one, so it's very um, it's very basic, and it's organized like what how we understand it, and then we have we develop questions, so that we, we didn't say in the book. I, I tell you that so um, so uh, deeply because uh, it's in German language. We try to say. Um, try to develop with the choreographer some questions so that people who read it, that they oh, have the idea, oh, what can you do with, with film or with, with the pictures and so on. And then we made examples how to do that. So that it's very practical and these examples um, uh, are in, in these little books because uh, when we, uh, during the, the research pro uh, process, we made uh, three choreographies. So we invited three choreographers to make, to work with different groups. One group was, was a children group, no, children, they were between 12 and 16. And the other group were, were a school, in a school, um, a class, and the third group were, were um, adults, and these three people worked with, the, with these groups, and they said, oh, I need 
to do that, I need some examples. I need, it, I need to have it practical. And the uh, uh, second thing is whoop, generating movements. It, um, shaping movements. So how, what, what are you going to do with, um, with all these movements, the movement material you have? And how can you work uh, with, the, with the children, for example, in schools, together with the children in schools to, to shape their movements and not that they generated movement and then you go home and then do it for your own and then you come back and say, do this. <laughs> And, and so that, this is um, the module concerning, um, concerning the shaping of movement. And this is what we found out is very, very important for um, contemporary choreographers at the moment. It's choreographic games. Now, the idea of games and the game structure in the development of choreography. That, um, the idea that choreography is not a fixed, um, uh, um, um, fixed and, and um, um, notated, for example, um, thing, that it's more performative thing, and this is developed in a kind of sometimes a real-time composition. So that means uh, games are very important, and we try to differentiate here between the different games uh, we found. Um, in the work of choreographers or what they talk about, how they talk about it. And the next important thing for choreographers is collaboration. So, um, so how do, how do um, choreographers work together with other people like dancers, musicians, uh, dramaturgs, um, uh, the theoretical people, uh, scholars and, and and other people, so we found out that the most, or a very important thing for, um, for artistic work nowadays in, in um, contemporary choreography is exactly collaboration. So um, to, to develop, the, the, the process is actually about how can we collaborate? How can we make it, um, if you want to say it in political um, terms, how can we have a democratic process, yeah, a non-hierarchic and so process. And uh, this is uh, this is actually uh, <laughs> what came out is this is actually for for a lot of people the starting point, and uh, probably also the most important um, uh, most important thing in the process. And this is quite a big book because it was the most complicated book. It's about composition. So no choreographer wanted to speak about how, what is, what is his or her composition tool. Because in our history, composition is kind of genius, it's in, intuition. And so I do it like this. So it's not about handwork, it's not handcraft, you know? It's not about um, knowledge which you can uh, uh, you can talk about, and so we we spend a lot of time um, to to speak about composition with uh, some dramaturgs and also a lot of choreographers, and this is about um, composition. So how to bring all the materials, the shape and whatever material to, together to a kind of uh, scenic or um, compositorial work. And here is the thing which, which, was, which we, that we developed because um, of our evaluation. You see these are cards and we made these cards, there are more than 30 cards and there are different names on it. For example, turn around, also umkehren, so, or quote, Quot, uh, quotation or uh, ironisieren, ironize, and 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 so um, different cards, and you find some definitions of it, and on the other side you can write things down uh, for yourself, and so for example you can use it for games. Um, for example, when you go into a class and you say, okay, we we make um, um, what is aleatorisch, um, um, uh, aleatorisch, aleatoric, yeah, 
yeah, game, game, and and the um, and the people in the class can use it. So you develop um, movements or whatever um, with these cards, but you can use it also for other uh, different for composition and so on. And here you can write things down, and <laughs> that's very practical. You have a pencil and you can wash it up. You can do it often. And this is my little, little, little nice thing. I like it very much. When you, when you prepare it and you don't want to take this big thing with you, you can use it like this. <laughs> and so that you don't lose any car. Um, so, and we have also these practices which are, so because we think it's not, so you will find other tool cards for yourself and then you have, you can write it down here. So, and, uh, so, and then we also made these two things, that the first thing is about Laban analysis because we, we found out that in our discussion with the choreographers, they have really different understandings on what is space, what is a body, uh, what is a reduction, what is phrasierung, what is um, phrasierung, yeah, form, and so on. And we wrote these things down coming from Laban analysis because we said when we talk about form, for example, we use this. No, this definition, and that's our understanding of form, so that the people <laughs> are, uh, understand what we mean. And we have a, just a second one that if you want to, um, it's a, just to know what the content of every little book is. So this is actually um, the content. And there is a last thing. This is a book. It's called Contemporary Choreography. And this book, there, I wrote a text in it. It's uh, it's it's kind of hand uh, handbook article about um, the history of the term choreography, so um, that people understand um, that the term choreography changed in history, and that that uh, that the social and the political context is very um, important for the different understanding of choreography. And we have also interviews with some different artists here in the book so that people who read it, that they know what actually the artist um, um, said when they were talking, when they are talking like uh, Jonathan Burroughs about principles and their understanding of choreography. And uh, these, uh, actually these interviews were very long. For example, with Xavier Loire, I made an interview for six hours or something like that. And so I um, tried to, to concentrate it on um, different topics. So this is actually the toolkit. What are we, do what are we doing with it and who is using it? And um, who is using it? And what we, I, I'm very happy that Jenny Coogan told me that she's also using it in Paluka School. And we were made, a, for example, also a workshop in Paluka School and in Dresden and in other places. So, how to work practically with this. And the, the, the users are very different. There are teachers in school, they are coming from theater, and they want to work in a kind of choreography and uh, there are uh, there are choreographers young choreographers who work with it and they reflect their own um, artistic position uh, and they use the, the toolbox for it there are really different different user user groups and um, the, the the next point we did is that we tried to to concentrate this toolbox on how to bring it into school education. And that's why we developed from the toolbox a curriculum for, dan uh, for teachers in school. This, what I, uh, what I said to you some, some minutes ago, this is what we, MAS in, um, in, um, for, for teachers in Hamburg. And in one year, they, we work with the toolbox and, and that means we means in that sense that we invited a choreogra choreographers to work with the teachers and to make them understandable how to use the toolbox. And so that, that means in the end that um, we try to connect 
uh, artistic work, contemporary artistic work with schools in Hamburg. So that is not the transmission of, oh, that's what the artists do, and that's what I what I can do in schools. It's it's a it's a little thing of the big thing, you know. And so it's that's yeah, that's our aim. I have to stop now, and I thank you very much. Thank you very much for this fascinating uh, lecture with a new form of research results, if we may say. I have, um, we have some time for questions, but I think that you wanted to open for a discussion. Mm -hmm. Yes, you want of to course, I, I would love to discuss. Discuss discussion more than questions, but mm. yes. I suppose we have some people with questions. Yes. So, <laughs> Hi, thank you so much, Gabriele, really interesting. Uh, also interesting that you uh, raised the question about the genius and uh, that you had that discussion. And also to hear the groups that are using this. Uh, what I'm interested in is the people that wrote they wrote it, have they discussed how, if it's changed their work afterwards, when they analyze their methods and tools, and have you had that kind of evaluation with the choreographers who participated in this? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we have it um, because we, ha we had it immediately during the process when we worked with them for three days. We always had reflections on it, and they said almost uh, that they are um, they understand the work of the other because they have actually the same problem like, like um, every audience member has that they don't know it. And after a while, so because everybody of them got the toolbox or toolkit um, when, when it was ready, 60 choreographers, and they work with it in different um, contexts. And so they uh, always, when I met, uh, meet somebody, they tell me so how it works to work with it in a different context. And yeah, I think um, it's, it's different. Um, of course, there are some choreographers like um, who are very um, clear in their aesthetic position like Jonathan Burroughs or like uh, Savi or, or also um, Martin, they are re really clear. That's a, of course a big difference to people who are developing their um, aesthetic principles. Yeah. Mm. So very impressive the kind of analytical and reflective work mm. that is behind that box to begin mm. with. That's fascinating. I'm wondering a little bit about the zeitgenössische uh, dimension, the contemporary dimension, yeah. you know, when do you think that the lifespan of it, this toolkit would be over? Ah, when <laughs> that's a very <laughs> good question. It? it was historic when, we, when it <laughs> came out. Exactly. Yes. So yes. You, you are completely right. That was also my problem that uh, somebody, um, that's why I, I made this um, it is, you are completely right, because I always said in the process, when it comes out, it's hist history. And it's a docu document about a process between uh, 2004, I don't know, when, when did we start, 2005 or something, until 2011. And that's why I wrote the article about the history of choreography. And that's why I, I tried to explain in the very beginning of the article that, that the term contemporary is a normative term. And also a term in the uh, in the step in one step of history, and that this um, <laughs> this project is about um, is not not for 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 the for your life. It's it, it's not it's something which is yeah. That yeah. That, that is a very interesting dimension of it because yes. I mean we yes, wish we could have had one from Nouvelle's time or whatever yes. you know to really see that kind of reflective work, but also understand that it that it's not sort of forever. Yes, yes. Also, the, the, uh, so when we did it, so the, in, in, in Germany, the, um, it's for example, the, the format like, uh, performance format like um, lecture performance was very, very popular. And so everybody, every choreographer spoke about lecture performance and, and the good thing is about lecture performance, the bad thing about it and things like that. And now it's history. It's uh, so lecture performance is yeah. For it's it's 
it's it's yeah it's in, in, at the moment it's not a, such a big discussion and so it's one example that it is history and thank you for the question it's a very important question that's why also we asked the choreographers uh, why do you think are you contemporary <laughs> yeah wh why are you, is your artistic work a contemporary work yeah. and of course the artist also asked us why do you invite me do you think I'm a contemporary choreographer okay thank you Gabriele it was very I would like to buy the toolbox mm -hmm. but um, I was wondering because you addressed the uh, social figuration in the beginning yes and I also as I understand you you could think of the choreographers you have worked with as exploring mm -hmm. on figuration social figuration mm -hmm. so I was wondering the other way around has there been a relation from this toolbox into the uh, so more sociological related analysis of social figuration? I mean, has the exploration of the choreographers, which is the background for yes. this toolbox, yes. has that also had an influence mm -hmm. or is it possible to think that this could, ha could have yeah. an influence on how the analysis of uh, mm -hmm. sociological mm -hmm. themes would proceed? I'm having in mind that sometimes I, th I find I might read sociological description, which mm -hmm. might be a bit, um, uh, well, it might be provocative to say, but simple on the uh, description of movement. So I think this toolbox could be great maybe for the analysis. I don't know if you have worked on that side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have two answers for it. The first is, it's, it's in the end of the 80s, I made together with um, Hortensia Völker, she is a director of the Kulturstiftung des Bundes, uh, the Cultural National Foundation of Germany nowadays, and we made a project together about the education system in Germany in dance. And at that time I visited hundreds, it was before the war, down in West Germany, and I visited a lot of schools, and I've, uh, I looked at it, so how do they work, and we tried to develop this project. And now, when I made this, uh, 20 years later, more or less, I found out, it was interesting for me, that not so many things in training changed. Not so many um, tasks changed, but the aesthetic concept and the, let me say, the um, ideology of contemporary dance changed very much. And uh, and this this was for me interesting on the on the one hand uh, I don't know why why why, why is this answer and <laughs> I come back to this and the second thing is um, so this toolkit was for me personally very important for my new project which is about protest movements so and it, it, I now have uh, with this uh, toolkit uh, uh, let me say um, other tools to understand the choreographic order of social figuration in this example of protest movements. For me, it's important, and I try it, so I made a, make a seminar at the moment about it in Hamburg, at Hamburg University, and it's, I try to discuss it with students, and it's, um, it's interesting because when we see movies, so how, to, how can we uh, analyze the choreographic order of these protest movements? And for that, the toolbox is quite uh, helpful. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> Let me give you one example. When we, um, so last example, for example, when we um, when we went to schools, uh, so and when we introduced this toolkit, so mostly uh, dance teachers or sport teachers or music or theater or um, <coughs> visual, visual art people came and wanted to know something about the toolkit. And I said, oh, I want to talk with people of, in biology or in history, history, who are teaching history. And they said, why? And I said, so I, I want to explain it to you. And we made, a, in the end, they made a choreography about it. I said, look, when you as a bio, 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 biology teacher want to, um, want to introduce the students to the autonomy of a body, 
and the organs and things like that, you can do it as a choreography. Some people are the blood, and some people are the different organs, and you can try to, to do it as a choreography. You can make it understandable, and also in mathematics. And I try to, to make people understandable Then, when they talk about choreography in schools. It's not just, just dance is a big thing, of course, but it's not just about dance. It's not just for people who are teaching movement. It's about people, it's for people um, also for, for a collaboration between different people, different teachers in schools. And that was also um, for me very important to make this clear for, for, um, for teachers in schools. Gabriel, I'm interested in the choreography of the money. And uh, where of the, does of the what? money? Uh, money, oh yeah. Where does it come from? Who, is, who paid for your project? Oh. Um, I, I think, uh, yeah, so the, the um, cultural minister of uh, research and uh, research and education the, um, in, in Germany, National Cultural Min Natural Ministry for Research and Education, they paid for it. And, um, and then when we um, made it also in the Hamburg Senate and there the um, uh, the Senate, uh, who is respons uh, responsible for um, schools and uh, the education system, because you know Hamburg is a Stadtstaat, no? it's a uh, own, its own state. Um, they paid for the transmission of these choreographic toolbox into a curriculum for Hamburg teachers, and we developed that, and then we, yeah. So, how did they come to? Um, decide that this was uh, a priority or a funding <coughs> priority? Um, they came to it because um, in, in Hamburg, uh, in, in Germany, there was what I said, this t uh, dance plan Germany. It was um, a big project from the um, German Cultural Foundation and um, they wanted to develop it and the deal was that um, if they give money for a project, the other partner also has to give money. And as, the, as somebody who applied for it, like me, has to ask the um, cultural, um, and, and Kulturstiftung des Bundes, cultural minister of Germany, and, and the Bundesministerium, and they br um, put it together. And that's why I got the money for it. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was a long, it, it, it took me two years, yes. so it was not so easy to get the money, but... Um, <laughs> Pardon? Yeah, I, I, can. I mean, did you educate the teachers to use the toolkit in any way? Yes. Otherwise, you know, you have yes. the toolkits and they'll be left in the locker or and yes. never be used. Yes, we have, what I said to you, that we have this MIS now for, for teachers, we have 20 teachers at the moment who are um, educated by different artists and also here Esther, uh, here uh, Gita Bartel, one of my um, assistants, she's actually a former dancer of the uh, Pina Bausch company and, uh, and uh, was studied at Volkwang and she was a member of the project and she is introducing teachers with work by workshops into the choreographic toolkit and unfortunately she's not here because I thought it would be f um, would be a lot of fun to have a workshop also here about the choreographic toolkit not just a talk <laughs> uh, I have a question um, how did I'm here. Ah, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> there is a, yeah. uh, how, uh, I'm curious about the process of uh, uh, choosing uh, these different categories within the toolbox, mm -hmm. like how to generate movement yeah. and choreographic composition. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious about this because for me, I would say that it's, I guess that for some people it can be uh, yeah. uh, um, very clearly worked mm -hmm. like this, mm -hmm. but I can observe also in the work of certain people mm -hmm. something that, for instance, these two categories are not are one category, mm -hmm. for instance. So I'm yeah. curious about this. Yes, a very important question. So it's a module system that means 
you don't, it's not a linear system, it's not a sequencialized system, you can use it as you want to. And so when you, when you for example, find here something which is interesting for you, you see here's red, and then you can see there's um, red means here this one, and uh, of course, and then you can see here tools, um, uh, to combine tools, and then you can go through it like you want to. You can start here, and in the end, you come to generating movement, or the other way around, how, how you do, how you are interested um, in it. That was our idea. So, because we know that people have different backgrounds, <laughs> and so that, was it your question? Yeah. Uh -huh. I just have a question I would like you to emphasize on how uh, you would describe what would be the genius uh, choreographer's part or responsibility versus the democratic work or process or element in a democratic composition or group. So maybe this is a part of the secrecy so, uh, connected to why yes. you wouldn't find you know, the, um, the tool of the yes, choreographer. <laughs> sorry. Um, the, the term democratic work is very um, vib uh, vib vibrating term in dance, in the dance field at the moment. As a so social scientist and coming also from political theory, I would say it can be something very different. So um, democratic, me almost in 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 the terms of in the dance field, almost means no hierarchy. So. Everything uh, does everything, um, everybody does everything, and, and so on. But um, democratic can mean, can be uh, representation, can be uh, direct democracy, can be um, uh, participatory partic participation in, in the democratic process. And I, when I talk with the choreographers about it, I actually want to know what kind of what kind of democratic process do you mean, actually? And that's my question to you. What, what kind of democratic process you, you mention? Well, also I, in your talk. No, I, when I listened to you, I heard that you said it could be a difficulty trying to find the tool of the choreographer, mm -hmm. that she or he would not share this mm -hmm. s for your book on yes. choreography. This is how I understood so what you said. So this is what I mean in this process between mm -hmm. the genius choreographer and the democratic mm -hmm. group work, maybe there is a, this is the reason why it's sort of hidden or secret, the, the choreographer's mm -hmm. genius tool. <laughs> mm -hmm. How do you... <laughs> when, when we talked about this of collaboration, so as you know, for example, there are some really prominent choreographers who, who are, um, who represent the idea of collaboration. For example, Xavier Leroy and his peace project, for example. And, but it's a piece of Xavier Leroy. It's not a piece about the 15 people who are part of it. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, and then you have to deal with the idea of the representation of the piece and the, the capitalist system of art, because you can sell a piece of Xavier Leroy, but you can't sell a piece of 20 people. And, um, and, and sometimes unknown people. And, uh, and so you have these problems and you have also the problems during the process that, so how is the relationship between a musician and a choreographer? Because music is sometimes really a powerful thing. And, um, and so sometimes it's represented in the relationship between a musician and a choreographer but it's actually the um, relationship between music and dance. And, and so this was very, th these questions uh, were very important. And so for example, it's not a democratic also means the, the, the relationship between the art forms. And what is the role of a dramaturg in, in a choreographic process? It's not just the person and the role between a person as a choreographer and the person of a dramaturg. It's also the role, what is the um, balance between the knowledge, the dramaturgical knowledge of the piece or for piece or process and the choreographic knowledge. And so it's sometimes it's abstract, it's from, no? Yeah, and there are different levels of, no? democracy here in the process itself. Okay, we have uh, time for one short question. Before, 
Anyone? So if you plan to have a, to create a protest movement, could you use this toolbox, you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. So, so I gave credit point to the student if they have a good idea for a protest movement. <laughs> protest <laughs> against <laughs> choreography. But, but there is, yeah, yeah, we, we made jokes about it, but, um, but I think, um, so sometimes when, it, so what, what students are doing in the performance studies program that they are dealing with scores, they like to do it and they like to do it in the, in the urban space. And that's really about how to organize it, how to um, which which uh, score is um, it's it's working. And I think you get ideas here, but it can be a protest movement, <laughs> and but it can also be something yeah. different. Okay. So okay. when I actually when I uh, I gave a, had to give a talk in a, so, a sociological context, and I said. So, and it was very provocative for sociologists. I said, um, protest is not about revolution nowadays. It's about intervention. Because it's an aesthetic problem. It's not a problem of content. So the people are working on an aesthetic and probably on a theatrical, but also <coughs> when they use masks and, 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 and things like that, costumes, but they are also working on a choreographic level. And uh, these, these levels are, um, um, they, they are the political, there is a political power of the protest movement, actually. And that was very provocative, but here probably it's clear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank okay. you very much. Thank you.